Hi everyone, it's Lynn from The Stitch TV Show. Um, this is some just stuff that I've been working on. I've been doing these uh, blocks, and they're New York Beauty blocks. Um, so essentially it's, you know, curved piecing, but all of these strips are paper pieced. And I think you've seen them behind me on several different shows or whatever, but essentially this is what it is. It's a Karen Stone, um, pattern I've been working on for a few years. I've taken her class and stuff, but it's, it's pretty simple paper piecing, but there's just a lot of it. So that's what it is. But uh, what I wanted to talk to you today about, I guess it's a little bit of shop my stash and a little bit of, I just really like color and wanted to talk about kind of my approach to it and just kind of, you know, just talk through what I do and how I get there and that kind of stuff. So um, you, the pieces that you're going to be seeing are, you know, different variations of a spiky, uh, curved piece. So, and you can see this one's piece, this one isn't, this one's pieced. And these are really cool because they're kind of double, they've got that. And then this is just a cute little spiky, you know, um, thing. So this ends up being 12 inch finished. But, so what I want to talk about is, all right, so how do I put together one of these blocks? Well, the first thing that I'm going to start with is what is this outside piece? Because that's really going to govern my color kind of thought process. And then the next thing I do is I look at, well, what do I want to put kind of in the center? And my goal for this quilt is, is kind of twofold in that every block, I made a rule for myself that said every block I'm going to have or I'm going to do is going to have green, purple, and um uh, orange in every block. So this one has very little purple, but there's some purple right in here. Um, it's kind of a pinky purple, but it is purple. Um, and of course there's green here, and of course that's orange. So I've got it covered. But so that's like my basic kind of rule. Every block has that. So what I want to talk through is how I kind of get from this to this. So I pick out the two inside and outside corners. Um, and I picked this one out just because, you know, gosh, I love Tula Pink. This is the cute little, I think it's a acacia um, fabric with the little raccoons, and I think they're super cute. So I put it on the corner so you could see it. Um, so it would kind of be featured, but it'd blend in. Um, and then this is, I, I don't even know where I found a rose ostrich, but I like a rose ostrich, apparently, so... Um, this is just a gray with a rose ostrich, and I felt like these two go together from the standpoint of they still have that kind of green color. So how do I fill this in? So I really kind of stick to how do I highlight certain colors that have already been given to me in these two pieces and then pull out those colors in a different way. Um, and I'm always kind of looking for how I can do that and then still meet my requirements of this has got to have purple, green, and orange in it. So when I started with this one, I looked at this and then added, you know, this goes with that and then you've got this hot pink and then this is just a darker kind of purple. This is a really a purple, uh, kind of a purple gray color. All right, so then that gave me that. Then that, if you just look at those, those all work together. Then I, this is a solid piece of fabric that I fell in love with. It's got some stitching in it, and it's this really cool. And I felt like, well, it picks up that it's giving me my orange, so I wanted this because of the orange, and it kind of picks up that bluey, so it changes this from a purpley to a kind of blue. So it's just going along with this. This one's the one I think's more unexpected. Uh, one, this has got some metallics on it. It's a rose metallic on it. And um, these are Pussy Willow print in the background, which I really kind of liked. Um, and I just did this because it was muted, so it gave me this muted. But I thought that those looked really good together. And then this hot pink not only picks it up from here, but I'm carrying kind of this hot pink through these three things. All right, so, all right, so then that gave me this set right? So then what's unexpected is, is I'm now taking a blue, which is I'm picking up a blue from here, although it's a, it's a really different background blue. It's, you have to look closely to see it, 
but this is one of those cork fabrics that's also got a metallic in it so I kind of like that I was playing with metallic and then of course this is my cheddar orange it's not the exact color orange that I expect but I don't care it gives me that orange and it gave me a little pop so that my eyes kind of drawn to that spiky outer ring and I and I really like it so that's how I work from here to here so let's kind of see it just from a raw perspective this is your seeing it done so from a raw perspective here's my outside corner let's take this away so you're not seeing that green um, here's my outside corner and this is what I started with on this one um, and then I'm just gonna walk through some of my um, choices. So the inside choice for this one is going to be this, which is one of those Moda paint by number like looking things. Um, this was left over from a challenge that Pam gave me some fabric and so I just liked it. So how do I get from here to here? And I ended up using a few different strips. So, but when I looked at the, this is the fabric that this came from, you know, I'm kind of looking at this fabric and I'm going, okay, what can go with it? And how do I get this? Which I think these kind of blend together, so that's a nice step, stepping point. Um, but I want to actually highlight things and bring out colors that are unexpected. And how do I do that? So... The first thing I did was I thought I would use, oh, and I didn't bring my scrap, but I thought I would use this plaid. I thought the plaid really gave me an interesting look um, in that it, it doesn't have these exact colors, but it does have some of that green. See, and so I felt like, well, that's a kind of a nice, that's just got some nice look to it. It's gonna look good with that. So I'm gonna put it up against this. So even though I know it looks good with this, I'm drawing it as far away from that corner um, that's gonna have that. And let me move this aside. Um, although we're gonna refer back to it. So I put this plaid up here and I was really happy with the way that did. The next thing is I had a, a little spiky border um, and I wanted to have, now remember I have to have green, purple, and orange. So what I decided was I really liked this orange and I liked this orange kind of with both of them and then I felt like this purple flower kind of looks good with this so I felt like we've got some intensity and in color here and I like that it looks like that but I didn't want my border to just be this and this so I thought I'd add another color to it and what I did is I pulled in this green and you'll notice that green really has that rich green to it and it's pulling it from here and it also I think looks good with our plaid so even though these are completely unexpected I'm already tying these to the corners and I'm saying even though this is a plaid and I'm putting this up against it I'm not concerned of the I'm not looking for a hard edge here as much as I'm looking for these colors are going to be intense and they're going to hold up against what I'm putting them up against. So this is going to be a spiky kind of thing and, and I, I'm going to show you how this looks but I want you to kind of see how I just kind of play with the cards first, my fabric scraps first before I actually put it all together. Now you're going to see that too. The next one is I had another spiky thing and I knew I wanted I knew I wanted to pull in some red. So I found this kind of paisley red. Now it's not a true red. This is like a more cranberry looking red. And I kind of like that. Um, and it just reminds me of some of the prints that are in here with the tomato and that kind of stuff but I really wanted to pop against it because if you'll notice this print, it really has some, some yellow in it and kind of that greenish yellow. So uh, I thought the next spiky thing that I'm gonna do is gonna have this red as my background and then I'm gonna alternate, and this is what I did with this one too, I'm gonna alternate these two as my little spikes. So I like this, this is giving me my orange this yellow I think really kind of pulls out some of that yellow in here and it hits some of the highlights of the brighter yellows that I'm kind of yellow greens that I'm getting in this corner. 
So that's going to be my next row. So this is alternating spikes with that background, and these are alternating with that background. Then I was going to do a bigger one, and it's a little bit more complicated, but I wanted, um, I wanted it to have a real thin of the, one of those um, real thin um, borders. So I started here, and I said I really like this background with this. I feel like it's similar in um, style. I feel like it's kind of the same intensity in the colors with the creams and stuff. And I like that it gives me this little pink pop as a background. So with that, I'm going to make my triangles this pink, which I think picks up on this pink. Um, and I like that. But I wanted something to really make this pink pop. And there's nothing better than to make a pink pop with a hot green. And so I just use this kind of neon green as kind of the spiking off point for that. So this will be my background, and then these two will be my triangles on that one. And then the last one that I did is I wanted to have, oh, and I forgot the background. So I wanted to have um, another spiky thing, and I wanted... Um, to kind of calm it down a little, and I'm sorry, I forgot the background to show you, but I've used a yellow background for this. Um, so these will alternate spikes, and it'll be these two. Now, I, I just want you to look at this. This feels very disjumbled, right? But because I'm trusting myself that I'm going, this, these two look good with this. And if I put a yellow with these two, I'm going to complement this. I'm, you know, I'm trusting that I'm teaching, or, or that I'm taking each one of these separate, and then when I put them together, they're just going to have a real intense, unique pop to it. My other rule for this quilt has been not to repeat fabric. So um, part of me is just enjoying that challenge of saying, okay, how else can I combine fabrics together that's going to make it interesting? So you can see that these don't feel like they could go together, but now that you've seen me kind of talk through it, I'm always going back to one of these two to um, jump off of. <coughs> so now let me show you how I did it. All right, so let me renew these, move these away. And this is not everybody's taste. Remember, this is mine, and I enjoy doing it this way. So if you'll remember... This was my next set, and this is what it turned out to be. So isn't that cute? So notice, I'm looking at, these are big pieces, and when you start putting this together, they become very small in the pop of it. So notice how I like the green, and that pulls that. It also is pulling that purple in there, and I like how the flowers and this, just how it happened, kind of peek in and out of that. So that gives me more interest to look at. Um, and I like how that builds. So there's that. So my next one, if you'll recall, was that red. The red with the yellow and the orange. And I really liked how that jumped off. And notice then that became this one. Again, I'm dealing with the fact that I've changed it from orange to red, so I'm going kind of a deeper, but I'm using that pop with that yellow so that it kind of glows a little, which I really like how that yellow is kind of bouncing off of here and pulling that out. And then this one turned out so much better than I, than I thought it would, even looking at the cards. There's something about this pink right here that just glows a little, and when I put this neon against it, it really makes it pop and stand out. And even though pink's not a dominant color in here, it's still working really well. And I like how it does it against the cream. So this is how that one turned out. And notice how it just gives me that really neat, see how this kind of glows and that green kind of makes it pop? And it does that because I've put a duller background on it and it allows it to kind of stand up against it. So you'll notice even though it seems disjointed, there really is kind of a reason there. And then the last one, of course, I did this yellow um, with the red and the purple. And these are really similar in the depth of color. And so the yellow I know is just going to pop against it, kind of like that red 
pops against this celery green. So here it is. So notice how when I put these together, they're going to have a really unique look to them and it allows some stuff to really stand out. And it'll allow me to go from this kind of more paint by number thing all the way through to this. And it does work. So don't be afraid to use colors that are unexpected together. Don't be afraid to use colors that you don't think necessarily match because I promise you when I put this in that quilt and if you see it, um, you are gonna think, oh wow, those all kind of go together but it's because I followed some rules and my rules were it has to have orange, green, and purple. And then I allowed the inner and outer corners to govern what has been pulled from this. And you'll notice it just gives you a really unique look. So anyway, I just wanted to walk you through that and let you see kind of my thought process on how to put one of these together. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later.